how is flat work imperative for jumping schooling? Flat work is really, really very important for both other phases other than dressage because it really works on both the horse and rider's balance and their balance together, being off the aids, you know, working very much together in a way that keeps the jumping easier and keeps you safer, keeps you thinking together and on each other's aids, which is the most important thing when it comes to jumping. It doesn't necessarily your horse has to be on the bit and going in an outline to be balanced and off your aids. So that's the difference between flat work for jumping and flat work for dressage but the whole thing stems to working together and being off your aid and being in balance. How can you practice cross-country self-fences at home? Practicing cross-country at home um, I don't do a lot of. I mean I, I tend to most of the cross-country schooling I do I'd pretty much always go somewhere else to do it but if I couldn't or I was wanting to do different exercises at home that would help towards cross-country riding then I would just build some bounce fences and some angled angled rails in the school and you know some narrow things if I could find them just to you know have as a bit of variation for the horse and make both rider and horse sort of think together and do a a few things that are just a bit trickier. I wouldn't ever do it too big at home. I think that can overface in an unnatural sort of environment, but just really working on the basics of going across some angles and jumping skinnies, always keeping your eye exactly where you want them to jump it without them drifting left and right could, you know, nothing but help for your cross country. And what top tip would you give to somebody who's preparing for their first event? top tip for someone that's preparing for their first event would be just to keep it basic, keep it simple, go feeling prepared, feeling like you have um, been jumping at the height that you're going to be jumping at your competition, you've had help from your trainer, um, you've you feel that you've, you're going to the event with no stone unturned so that you are then confident enough that you can do it that can also help towards your nerves for the occasion as well. If you're going cross-country schooling how would you alter your training between a novice and an experienced horse? The training between a novice horse and an experienced horse for going cross-country schooling is very different. I mean with the young horses I would still you know, do a lot of the water schooling or if there's any ditches at the place, I would make sure I've gone over as many as possible, still up and down steps a lot, just experiencing them as many new things as possible, but keeping it very um, simple, but letting them see quite a lot of variation, but not too big, keeping them very confident and happy. Where the older ones could go it could be just for a sweetener or just to make sure their eyes are in of where I wouldn't necessarily do a great deal but I would have made sure that I would have you know just jumped to skinny seen the water had a jump into the water I mean it, it varies so much but just so that they're again very sweet and confident and working with you 